The morning began to break on the horizon, painting the sky with shades of orange and pink while the crowd gathered around Mount Golgotha. There, standing amidst the arid earth, was the cross where Jesus would be crucified. The centurion, an imposing figure among the Roman soldiers, watched closely as they prepared to carry out the sentence. The moments that followed were of an intensity that none of those present would ever forget. An earthquake shook the ground beneath their feet, making them feel as if they were on the brink of the abyss. The sun, which had just risen, seemed to darken, casting a shadow over the entire land. Rocks split apart, emitting thunderous sounds that echoed through the air. The centurion, accustomed to war and brutality, felt a shiver run down his spine. Never before had he witnessed something so extraordinary. As he looked at the man on the cross before him, a sense of awe mixed with admiration filled his heart. Then he said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Matthew chapter 27, verse 54. Did you like the introduction? That's just the beginning, because today we're going to delve into this enigmatic character, the centurion. We'll discover who he was, his role, and what happened to him after the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. As usual, I ask for your like, subscription to the channel, and remember to activate the notification bell to receive more content like this. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In the Roman ranks, the position of centurion was of great prominence and responsibility. It was a position coveted by many, but attained by few. To reach such a rank, it required not only courage and military skill, but also unwavering discipline and loyalty to the empire. The centurion was the commander of a century, a unit composed of about a hundred soldiers, and his authority was absolute within that context. As a Roman officer, he was part of a military machine that often enforced law and order by force, often through brutal methods such as crucifixion. A soldier aspiring to the position of centurion had to demonstrate not only bravery in combat, but also strategic skill and natural leadership. He needed to be an example to his men, inspiring them to follow his orders unquestioningly. Discipline and obedience were fundamental values for a centurion, and he expected the same from his subordinates. The centurion was a respected and feared figure within the Roman army. His bravery and intelligence were admired by his superiors, and his ability to lead men in battle often determined the outcome of a war. He not only commanded his troops on the battlefield, but also was responsible for maintaining order and discipline among his soldiers during times of peace. During the crucifixion of Jesus, the Roman soldiers played a crucial role in the execution, following orders and maintaining order during the process. While many of them were accustomed to dealing with condemned individuals and executions, the event they witnessed that day was unusual and disturbing, leaving an indelible mark on their minds. As Jesus hung and agonized on the cross, the soldiers not only crucified him, but also cast lots for his garments, fulfilling a common practice at the time to divide the belongings of the condemned among themselves. The Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 23 and 24 detail. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Despite being humiliated and scorned, Jesus maintained his composure. Throughout his earthly journey, Jesus faced numerous injustices. However, perhaps no moment was as emblematic as his trial and crucifixion. Faced with false accusations, mockery and violence, Jesus' reaction revealed not only his innocence, but also his divine nature. Since the moment he was brought before the high priest and the Sanhedrin, Jesus faced a series of fabricated accusations. 
Satan, however, at no point did he deviate from his serene and dignified demeanor. While being interrogated and insulted, he remained silent, responding only when necessary. His calm in the face of provocations was unsettling to his accusers, who expected a more emotional reaction. In Matthew 26, verses 62 to 64, Jesus is questioned by the high priest about his accusations, and his response is a direct affirmation of his divinity. You have said so, Jesus replied, but I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. These words not only reaffirm his messianic identity, but also point to his divine authority. During his trial before Pilate, Jesus faced more unjust accusations, but again his response was one of calm and resignation. Even in the face of the crowd's demands for his crucifixion, he remained serene, refusing to engage in disputes or futile debates. As he was whipped, crowned with thorns and ridiculed by the Roman soldiers, Jesus endured it all with dignity and humility. His silent stance in the face of violence contrasted with the brutality of his tormentors, revealing his inner strength and confidence in the Father's will. During his crucifixion, Jesus continued to demonstrate compassion and forgiveness, even amidst his own suffering. In Luke 23, verse 34, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. These words show his willingness to forgive even those who crucified him, revealing his unconditional love for all humanity. It's worth remembering that the centurion was nearby Jesus, ensuring that the sentence was carried out while witnessing all of Jesus' activities and reactions. Meanwhile, the nature around began to react in an unusual manner. An earthquake shook the ground, causing people to cower in fear. At the same time, a dense darkness covered the land even during the day, obscuring the sun and casting a gloomy shroud over the landscape. These natural events were interpreted as divine signs, witnessing the gravity of what was happening at that moment. Furthermore, after the death of Jesus, an even more extraordinary event occurred, the resurrection of saints. As recorded in Matthew 27 verses 52 and 53, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. This phenomenon only heightened the sense that something divine and supernatural was happening at that moment, even for a Roman soldier as experienced and hardened as the centurion, the crucifixion of Jesus was an extraordinary event. Despite being accustomed to the brutality and cruelty of military life, these events were deeply disturbing. They witnessed not only the death of a man, but also signs and wonders that challenged their understanding of the world. The earthquake the darkness and the resurrection of the saints left them stunned and questioning their own beliefs and convictions. Nothing compared to what he saw on that dark day on Mount Golgotha. From the earthquake that shook the earth to the darkness that enveloped the sky, everything seemed to indicate that this was no ordinary event. At that moment, the centurion saw the man on the cross before him with eyes that went beyond the physical. He recognized in him a divine presence, something that transcended his human understanding. He found himself questioning his beliefs and convictions, confronted with the idea that perhaps, just perhaps, that man truly was the Son of God. Even in the face of all the brutality and cruelty he had witnessed throughout his career, the crucifixion of Jesus was different. It was an event that challenged all his preconceived notions of what was possible. The events of that day marked his mind as he watched the man crucified. Truly, this was the Son of God, he murmured to himself, letting out a deep sigh. He had never seen anything like it before. Even in moments of torture and suffering, Jesus radiated an aura of peace and serenity that transcended everything the centurion had ever experienced.
As the centurion stood there, contemplating what he had witnessed, Jesus' words echoed in his mind. He remembered the unjust accusations, the hasty trial, the enraged crowd clamoring for blood. Yet in the face of all this suffering, Jesus remained silent, accepting his fate with dignity and compassion. The centurion found himself questioning everything he thought he knew. He had been trained to obey orders from his superiors without questioning, but now he found himself questioning everything. This man on the cross was not an ordinary criminal. He was innocent. He was the Son of God. As the crowd dispersed and the sun began to shine again in the sky, the centurion remained there, lost in his thoughts. He knew that his life would never be the same after that day. He had witnessed something that would change the course of history forever. And he knew, deep in his heart, that he could never forget what he had seen on that hill called Golgotha. In a world dominated by war and violence, he recognized divinity amidst pain and suffering. And that revelation changed his life forever. After witnessing the extraordinary events surrounding the crucifixion of Jesus, the Roman centurion, whose name would become known in Christian tradition as Saint Longinus or Longinus, experienced a profound spiritual transformation that would change the course of his life forever. As Christian tradition recounts, the centurion, known as Saint Longinus, decided to abandon his former life as a Roman soldier and dedicate himself completely to following Jesus. He renounced earthly power and glory in search of true peace and spiritual meaning. His journey of faith led him to a life of service and testimony, preaching the gospel and sharing the transformative message of Christ's love. An additional curiosity about the centurion is the fact that he was one of the first Gentiles to recognize and proclaim the divinity of Jesus. In the context of Jewish society at the time, where most of the early followers of Jesus were Jews, the centurion's testimony as a Roman officer is notable. This highlights the universality of Jesus' message and his ability to touch hearts beyond ethnic and cultural boundaries. The recognition of the centurion as a Roman military leader also underscores that the gospel is not exclusive to a particular social class, but is available to all people, regardless of their position in society. However, his decision to follow Christ was not without cost. Longinus drew the ire of the Roman authorities, who saw him as a threat to the status quo and social stability. He was subjected to interrogations, threats, and ultimately torture as a means to coerce him to renounce his faith and cease his preaching. Tradition reports that Longinus was subjected to brutal martyrdom as a consequence of his fidelity to Jesus Christ. He was tortured in an extremely cruel manner, having his tongue ripped out to silence his voice and his eyes gouged out to blind him so as to incapacitate him from continuing to spread the gospel message. These acts of torture aimed not only to inflict physical pain, but also to intimidate and terrorize other followers of Jesus, serving as a brutal example of retaliation against those who challenged the established authority and opposed the predominant belief system. Despite the indescribable suffering he endured, Longinus remained steadfast in his faith and devotion to Jesus Christ until the last moment of his earthly life. His courage and resilience in the face of persecution have inspired countless Christians over the centuries, strengthening their own faith and dedication to the gospel. In this way, Saint Longinus is considered one of the holy helpers, a group of saints revered by the Roman Catholic Church for their powerful intercession in times of need. Devotion to Saint Longinus developed over the centuries, especially among the faithful who seek his help in matters of health, particularly related to vision. There is also a legend that Saint Longinus, that is, the centurion, was the same Roman soldier tasked with overseeing the crucifixion of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Before witnessing the events of the crucifixion, Saint Longinus reportedly had some visual impairment. 
However, upon piercing Jesus' side with the spear, as described in the Gospel of John chapter 19, verse 34, some versions of the legend claim that the blood and water that gushed from Jesus' wound touched Longinus' eyes, restoring his vision instantly. This miracle, along with all the other events that occurred, is said to have led Longinus to recognize the divinity of Jesus and to convert to Christianity, becoming a devout follower. Therefore, devotion to St. Longinus as a protector of the eyes and issues related to vision may be related to the legend that he had a visual impairment before piercing Jesus' side with the spear and after the event, his vision was restored. This belief led many people to seek the intercession of St. Longinus in matters of ocular health and other vision-related needs. It is worth noting that this identification is part of various Christian traditions, however, it is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. The story of the centurion is a powerful reminder of the transformative impact that encountering Jesus can have on our lives. This Roman officer, whose duty was to ensure the crucifixion of Jesus, witnessed extraordinary events that led him to proclaim, Truly this was the Son of God. His recognition of Jesus' divinity was not just a casual observation, but the result of a heart touched by divine grace. From that crucial moment, the centurion's life changed forever. His spiritual journey led him to abandon his old life and follow in the footsteps of Jesus, becoming a devoted follower of the gospel. The centurion's transformation teaches us that no matter who we are or what our past has been, Jesus' redeeming love has the power to set us free, heal us, and lead us to a life of purpose and meaning. Like the centurion, we can find hope and salvation by surrendering to Christ's unconditional love. May the story of the centurion inspire us to seek true identity in Christ and to live a life that reflects his love and grace towards others. May we, like him, recognize and proclaim that Jesus is truly the Son of God and that in his name we find forgiveness, restoration and eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like subscribe to the channel and click on one of these two videos that will appear on your screen. I'm sure you'll love it. Best regards and God bless.